Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about what are the new features offered in Kotlin 1.4 for app developers. So let me start with the SAM first. SAM is a single abstract method which is a great way to replace the interface callable with the lambda. Let's see it in action. So just like normal interface, you create your interface. Say I'm creating an interface called as math operation and it's having a single method uh, name as operation which takes two parameters, both of integer type, and it returns integer. Now this is a normal interface. If you want to convert this interface to a SAM, then you just have to add fun in front of interface. That's it. Let's see how do it works. So create an object. Say I want to create an add object because I want to perform an add operation. I'll call this interface and inside this lambda I'll write uh, addition operation so here I'm adding two numbers so these two parameters is something which we'll get from this add dot operation method and in turn this will return an integer after adding these two numbers uh, let's add two numbers so print add dot operation and let me take two numbers 15 and 25 so after taking these two numbers this will perform an addition operation and in turn will return a result to us let's see so this should return number 40 to us and here it is so that is sam next feature is a callable reference for the default argument before that, it is important to understand what is higher order function because we are going to talk about higher order function there. Higher order function is a function which takes function as a parameter or return function as a result. For example, for this function called as operation, if you are passing any parameters to it, now this is a normal function. It's not a higher order function. But to convert this function to a higher order function, you can accept function as a parameter like the function is a label here and then I'm accepting any values here which is having a return type of unit so this function have a return type of unit which means it doesn't return anything by this way we make a higher order function or we can return even a higher order function okay now let me talk about the callable reference with the default argument say that I have a function called as uh, append dollar so say the use case is like you'll get a number and you have to append dollar in front of it. So it's a normal function where you get uh, some amount of double type and uh, in turn you return the string value of it by appending dollar in front. Okay, now let's create a higher order function, say $2 and uh, I'm going to pass the append dollar to this function. So because append dollar is having a return type of string so i'll pass this as a string and that's it now let's call this function so while calling this higher order function let me call this inside print so that we could see the value also now i do not want a lambda rather i'll pass this as a callable reference the few things to understand with a callable reference you cannot directly pass a function like this you need to use an double colon operator by this way you pass the function and whenever you do this then you have to remove the params now this is giving an error because we haven't provided the value for it so you should provide a default value for the method say the default value here is 0, 0.0 and that's it so this is an advantage of callable reference with default argument now if I want to change this value currently if I call this uh, method it will return me a dollar zero but if I want to pass some other value to this then what should I do is that I'll take dollar as parameter here and uh, I can pass say let me make it dynamic so I'll take this from the user and whatever user pass I'll pass this to this append dollar function. Now I can say like 50.0 comma this and that's it. 
by doing this it will take this value and will put it here for amount and by this way it will print dollar 50 let's say it in action so that is about the callable reference okay the next is trailing comma now this is really a cool feature say that you have a function called as add money where you get a money information and this say it overall value now one thing which you could observe is that i'm having comma here but i haven't defined comma at the end of the last parameter and this is really a normal way of accessing the method but how about adding uh, another comma here now this is a new feature added in kotlin 1.4 where you can have a trailing comma at the end of all parameters this is just one of the way to have a consistent look for all the params okay now after this the next feature is about named argument Say that you have a function called as add operation and you will need two params both of integer type and now when you want to call this function you can call like just giving a direct value to it or you can also give a name for this that is called as named argument because you are giving a name of the argument but this was really not possible before Kotlin 1.4 where if you could give a name of argument first and then initially leave all of them without naming them what was possible before was you could avoid this but eventually you could give something like num2 and here on whatever parameters which you'll pass you should provide a name for all of them but now with 1.4 it is purely optional for whichever you want to provide it just provide the argument for it say that I have number three also and I don't want to give a name for number three I just want to pass a value well I can do that so for whichever you want to give a name just give a name for it and rest will be taken care what is really not allowed here is that a mismatch of the sequence because as you haven't provided the name for this argument and if you mismatch with the naming like num1 is the first one and you are giving num3 as a first then you should provide name for all of them afterwards but if you are not uh, doing any changes with the sequence then you can completely avoid naming all the parameters okay so now let me talk about uh, what's new in collection so collection is really a great way for accessing the values doing some sort of operation on it and this is really useful for especially while making Android apps so there are a few of the development which happened for the collections also say that you're getting some values from network and you don't want this to be a null values so you could use a set of not nulls and say that intention let me add null here what it does is that it will automatically remove the null value from here and it will give me 45 10 and 4 by removing null so by this way you need not have to care much about null it will automatically remove for you another one is on a list say an array list you have an array list of uh, int or string or anything when you convert this to sequence earlier there was no option to shuffle the value but now you can shuffle the value and the same time if you are using a stream api say on each then now you have an option for on each indexed also where you'll get the value along with the index and finally let me talk about exit from the loop say that you are running a for loop and inside for loop you are using when so this for loop which runs between 1 to 10 and you are using when inside this for loop where you want to continue if you find number 5 and in case you get a number 7 you want to break from this 
loop. Now this is really possible with the Kotlin 1.4 version. By this way you will exit from the loop. So these were a few of the cool features offered in Kotlin 1.4 for the app developers and if you like this video then please do subscribe it, like the video and share it with your friends. Thank you so much.